Hey Live, I'm so happy you're here. If this is the first time you're seeing me, I created this broadcast the day that sheltering began just to create a sense of community and connection. And I started going live one to sometimes even three times a day. And it got a little bit boring just hearing myself talk. So I asked a bunch of my friends to come on and they were excited to do that. And we've got some fabulous doctors and, and, and chefs doing cooking demos. And uh, this looks like it's gonna be a daily show from now on. And I am looking to get a regular time. So it'll be you guys. But if you guys, okay, uh, you guys, hold on, hold on a second, Linda. Linda, Linda, just hold on for one second, okay? Yeah. And uh, because when you okay. talk, it takes me off screen. So what I was saying is, well, first of all, welcome, of course, and let me know that you guys are here. Uh, if you subscribe to my mailing list, every day we send out the schedule for the, the guest of the next day and the replay of that day. And so today's yeah. guest is Linda Middleworth. Okay, guys, shh, 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 just be quiet for one sec, okay? So I can introduce you because when you talk, it takes the screen away. Thank you. So today's guest is a dear friend of mine from Sacramento, and she is going to be doing a wonderful cooking demonstration. She is a PCRM cooking instructor. She's going to be making a recipe from my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, which is called Bravo Burgers, which is a recipe created in an Iron Chef competition by Chef Francis Bravo, and she's going to be making chocolate chip cookies. Now, she is one of... PETA's sexiest vegans over 50. And she won this award when she was in her 70s. She's 76 years old. And please welcome Linda Middlesworth. Linda, can you hear Hi. me? Hi, everybody. Thank you, AJ, for having me and Charles, too. I, I have to say right up front that AJ is one of those people, ever since I met her, has pushed me up and made me try things I would never think of trying. And I have to thank you for that because I wouldn't be brave enough without you. And I'm so glad that you did push me always to be better than what I am and help me along the way. She got me into Toastmasters. She um, said, you can do it. Whatever I wanted to do or she thought I should do, she said, you can do it, Linda. I said, oh my gosh, who me? And she was that kind of person and Charles right behind her both of them there for me my whole life, practically, ever since I met them. And I'm so happy to be here with you and show you some of my favorite recipes. But um, I'm just thrilled to uh, be a part of Chef AJ and Charles's life because they're so important to me. I'm gonna go ahead and start right off, well, first of all, I've been vegan for 32 years, and I'm very proud of that fact, because when I was uh, 44 years old, I had heart disease, I had cancer, I had thyroid cancer, and I had horrible obesity as well. I mean, I wasn't happy at all. I was an aerobic instructor. I was doing 25 classes a week, and I couldn't figure out why. I thought I ate healthy. But then I uh, moved next door to a new neighbor. And she said, oh, you can get rid of all that. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, yeah, just look up Dr. John McDougall. I said, who? And she said, yeah, you just look up Dr. John McDougall. And you, he'll tell you how to get well. And I said, OK. And I went down and bought the book he had at the time. I read it from cover to cover. And lo and behold, the whole book made such sense to me. I couldn't believe that I didn't know any of this. And he had people, examples of people in his book. They had this condition, they were overweight, they had heart disease, cancer, all kinds of things. And then they went on the McDougal diet and they got well. And I couldn't believe my doctor had never told me this. Once I had a big lump in my breast about the size of a golf ball, they took it out and I had asked the doctor, why do I have this? I think I eat healthy. He said, oh, your food is fine. I was eating chicken and fish and cheese and yogurt and ice cream and all the normal things that the standard American diet has. And I couldn't believe that no one told me that you could get healthy by your food choices. So I didn't even get a hold of Dr. John McDool yet. I just did it. I read the book and I started doing it. I wasn't perfect at first because... <clears throat> When I would go out to dinner, I would get 
four servings of French fries, you know, in oil, and some ketchup and a glass of wine, and that would be dinner because it was vegan. So I thought, this is wonderful. You could eat all this fun stuff and drink all this alcohol, and you'll be fine. Well, <clears throat> guess what? I did lose weight. I lost about 25 or 50, almost 50. I needed to lose, but the last 25 wouldn't go away. <clears throat> Later on, I met AJ. And she invited me to True North with her. It was such a dream come true. I even got to bring my dog. And I found out how people eat who are really healthy, who really even go beyond that and they don't drink. Well, McDougal doesn't want you to drink alcohol either, but I took out the alcohol and I took out everything. The oil was gone now, but I took out the salt and the sugar, actually salt, kind of lingered out and sometimes a little bit I'll have some salt but not not normally I'm beginning to really like my food without any salt at all and when you start really tasting food for a long time without all the salt the sugar and the oil you really appreciate the actual taste of the food it's like people who go on a fast and the first bite of food or drink is so phenomenal same kind of thing so Anyway, that's how <clears throat> I got started onto my healthy lifestyle. And I, I became certified in um, plant nutrition with uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell and the starch solution. And I'm a huge starch eater. I lost most of my weight by eating potatoes. I was eating so many potatoes, kind of like Andrew Spud Fit Taylor. I love my potatoes and they really helped me curb all the other cravings because they satisfied me so much. It's so satiating to eat potatoes. I still eat a lot of potatoes. Um, okay, I think any more questions about that? I will go ahead. Well, Linda, we have a couple of people, not a couple, a lot of people are saying you don't look like you're 76 and a half. You look like you're in your 30s or 40s and they wanna know if you had any work done. Any what? Any work done, I guess. Oh, means, like, no, no, but I'm starting to get these little old lady lines. But you know what? <clears throat> you know what helps them look better is if you smile. <laughs> so I try to smile a lot because those lines go away. So that, <laughs> that helps. I can't help them being there. I don't know what else to do about that because I couldn't eat any healthier if I tried. But I, I feel so good. I feel, I feel like I'm maybe 30, 35. I don't feel any older than 35. And when I teach aerobics, I can keep up with all my kids who are that age. So I feel like one of them. So I really miss teaching my aerobics right now with the, the virus, but uh, I hope one day to get back there. Uh, so Linda, Linda, how much weight did you lose in total, they're asking? I'll, I'll just short 50. Wow. And then lately, um, I'm going to show you the recipe that put pounds on me. So it's not for people on the weight loss program, but I'm going to show you it's a little higher concentration of calories. And so that's why, but it's still one of my favorite things. And yes, I do indulge once in a while. Just can't do it like I was doing. I was eating my banana oatmeal cookies. I would start with one a day. Then I got to two a day and then I got they're pretty big. I got to six a day and I started packing on the pounds. In fact, I could lose a few pounds right now because of those darn cookies. But if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, like Jim, he can eat 10 of them a day, but he's very disciplined. He only eats like two a day. And I think, oh, well, how can you do that? I don't know. If they're in the house, I want to eat them, but I'm very good when I make them in mine, not to eat them. But I make them for Jim, which I'll show you later. Um, shall I go ahead with my recipe? Yes, please. We're looking forward to it. Okay. Um, now, I found, I was looking around to see a, a new recipe I could try, and I found one in Chef AJ's wonderful book. And can you see it? It says, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss by this really darling picture of Chef AJ on the front. And in here, I found a recipe for burgers. And in the summertime, we like to eat a lot of burgers. So it was Chef. Bromsey's Bravo, uh, Bravo Burgers. And 
they look so interesting and it started me using two things I've never used before. I found the white Hannah yam. I already cooked and peeled this one, but it's, it's a white Hannah yam. And they're kind of a, a beige looking color, kind of a little bit reddish, a little bit. And they are so sweet and wonderful on their giant. Excuse so me, know. Linda, is Jim listening to this on another phone because we're getting a lot of feedback? Do, Jim, is your yeah. sound down? Because he's getting, she's getting feedback. Okay. Take your sound off. It's off. Okay, it's, it's off. Is yeah, it good it's, now? It's perfect. And they okay. want to know why you don't have any wrinkles. Okay. So anyway, on the Bravo burger, not only had it been the first time I used, I always bought yellow, uh, orange sweet potatoes and Yukon bowls and things like that. But I had never used a Hana yam. I didn't even, Hana yam, because I didn't know what they tasted like or anything. But they're really sweet. They're like a sweet potato, but they're a little thicker, I think, than a sweet potato. And I found those, but then I also found these shallots. He has, in the burger, he has these beautiful shallots. I've never had a shallot before until a couple weeks ago. So what shallots are is they're really a stronger flavor like than scallions or green onions. Plus they have a lot more antioxidants than either of those two. All onions are good for you because they're part of the allium family, which fights cancer. I teach that in my cancer classes. But this this little baby has so much powerful flavor and so rich in antioxidants that it supports your immune system, especially during this virus. So I recommend you get it. Inside this one thing, there's two bulbs. I'm gonna cut that open now. Can you see me, AJ? I sure can. Okay. I mean, can you see my shallot? Yes, I can see everything up to your cutting board. Okay. So I'm gonna take off the skin. Hey, Linda, now, uh, I, I was telling uh, Tammy Kramer this morning and Tom that I'm good at cooking and I'm pretty good at talking, but not at the same time. So I'm going to do my best. I'm putting the shallot, I peeled and putting, just dropping it in there. Now, the other thing that calls for is parsley, the Italian flat leaf parsley. It kind of looks like this. And I pulled the stems off and just used the tops of the leaves. Now, Chef Bravo said to use a whole bunch. This is almost the whole bunch of parsley. And I thought, man, this is going to taste like parsley and nothing else. You'd be shocked how it, all the other flavors overpower all that parsley. So I put the shallots in here. Can you see my processor? I sure can. And Linda, okay. when you get a chance, there's some questions about your thyroid cancer. What about my thyroid cancer? Like uh, you had a thyroidectomy, right? No, I still have my thyroid. Unfortunately, I didn't find out about McDougal until one week after I let that doctor radiate my, uh, radiate my thyroid once. And he didn't kill the whole thing, but it's almost completely dead. And then one week later, I ran into my new neighbor and she told me about Dr. John McDougal and I didn't go back for the other radiation. And then later he wanted to take the whole thing out and give me that, just have no thyroid. But by then I'd already read the book. I found out about McDougal and I thought, okay, I don't have to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not gonna have my thyroid out. I'm not doing any more radiation. I had a great big nodule on my thyroid and he said, if you don't, you're gonna be in trouble. And I said, nope, I found out how to eat. I'm gonna change it. And so, I had read in McDougal that I think her name was Jessica Bowen had, I think it was breast cancer or stomach cancer, one of them. And she had had stage four cancer. And she went to McDougal because they had radiated her for a whole year and chemotherapy and all of it. And she had gone for a whole year. And then when she got done, she lost her hair. She had, they said, we didn't get it all. Well, your body's so ravaged, we're going to have to wait till a few months before we start again. Well, she got so upset, she started Googling. She was only like uh, in her 20s. And she went and Googled and she found Dr. John McDougall. 
And he said, just eat a plant, a whole food plant-based diet. And she did it. She, she went from size 22 to size four. She lost all of her cancer on her own just by changing her food. Well, if that isn't a testimonial to get me going, that was it. That's all I needed. So that was just one of the examples. It was just unbelievable, really. So what I did here is I'm going to make a little noise in just a second. I just chopped the scallion and the parsley together. Oh, okay. I got a problem here. I think the blade is over there. The blade is over there. I need, the, I forgot to put the little S blade in here. So I'm not a professional cook. I like to cook, but I'm not professional. Okay, I gotta take this out, sorry. I need a bowl to put this in. Okay, yeah, I gotta put this in. Mm, sorry about this, guys. That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> this is real life. Yeah. Listen, take it's a real life, live a life, all right. Forgetting to put your S blade in isn't the biggest deal. It's when people forget to put the insert to their Instant Pot in and then fill their <laughs> Instant Pot. That's a disaster. Oh, man, that's a mess. <laughs> okay, I think I got it now, hopefully. Oh, here. Okay. <laughs> now we go. Let that go for a minute. Okay, we got it. You know, now, Linda, yeah. I just want to, yeah. just because you had mentioned our, our hero, Dr. John McDougall, you know, I'm thinking, yeah. and you have a question, just Google McDougall, but somebody's asking about whether they should be certified in plant-based nutrition, and I just want everybody to know that Dr. McDougall is offering all of his courses for absolutely free now, his starch solution course, everything. So if you're not subscribed to drmcdougall.com, please do so because he sent out another email today offering everything for free. That is amazing. He, in fact, one time I had Dr. McDougall speak years ago and he told me, this is a true story. Linda, if you charge for my lecture, I'm not coming. I said, oh, okay. So I really wanted him to come. So I paid $1,200 for this venue and gave it to a free everybody. And uh, we had about 200 people show up for that. But I was wanted to have him speak so badly because I know his message saves lives like he did mine. And I just couldn't stand the thought of him not coming because I charged. I never told him that. But um it, it turned out really well in any event, and that was the main thing. So, okay, I put the parsley and the scallion in here. Now I'm going to find, hold on. There's only four ingredients in this burger. Most of the bean uh, oatmeal burgers I've made, rice burgers, they have a lot of ingredients and then you they don't stick together very well. This is the opposite. This is four ingredients. You got the scallions, you got the parsley, and now we have the Hannah yam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I already microwaved it. Now you can bake it in the oven and take forever or you can microwave it. Dr. Greger says using the a microwave is perfectly great for food. Not everything is that great in the microwave when you cook it, but like I don't like my broccoli in there and things like that. But I do like potatoes in the microwave. He said that when you use the microwave, wave, it only heats up the water molecules and doesn't touch the food part of your vegetable. So like if you're steaming vegetables, all that nutrient goes in the water. So drink the water if you do that. But I've got all contained in this potato here. And I'm just going to mush this potato together with the scallion, I mean, sorry, the shallot and the flat leaf Italian parsley. And so it all stuck together. And look at all that parsley. You wouldn't believe that it wouldn't taste just like a big parsley ball. 
And actually, you can barely taste the parsley when you're done because the scallion and the sweet, sweet panna potato just take over. And now I'm gonna add one can of organic cannellini beans. I get the Eden one because there's no salt added. If you do get the ones with salt, just rinse them in water. And I'm gonna add the beans in here uh, and get rid of this, Jim. And I'm gonna mush the beans. Now, when I mush the beans, you're gonna leave some of them, sorry, I should put my hair back, uh, some of them intact so that there's a little texture. I have this nice little tool to help me scrunch up a little faster like this. And so what I love about these burgers is not only are they delicious, but they stay intact. And when you cook them, the outside is a little bit crispy and the inside is soft and mushy. And it's just fantastic. Okay, so after that, we're ready to, to make this recipe into four burgers. I'm just gonna push it together like this and kind of divide it into four, grab a handful and make a nice, beautiful burger. See how easy it is to do, just simple. And then I'm going to put them uh, on a silk pack. You heat your oven to 400. Here's one burger and I make four. You put your silk pack down either on your baking pan for your oven. I have, oh, I have the most wonderful oven that you all can ever get one. It's called the Brayville Smart Oven. And it is wonderful. It cooks things faster than a normal oven. So he calls for you to cook this for 30 minutes on one side, turn it over, 20 minutes on the other. But in my Brayville, I cook about 15 to 20 minutes on the one side and then about 10 minutes on the other side and it's done. So I make four nice big burgers. See how easy they are to put together and they, they hold together, which is just wonderful. And Okay, I'm gonna just make these four for right now. I could have made them a little bit bigger so it'd be just four, kind of flatten them out like this. They look like that. And then I need the uh, silk pat. So here it is. I use, what's it called, AJ, silk pat or? Yeah, or, or it, silk pat is a brand name, but it could be just called a nonstick silicone baking sheet. They have a lot of knockoff brands now that are cheaper, like at Costco that are just as good. Yeah, these are lovely because nothing sticks. So I put that on my rack in my smart oven and I put the burgers on top and don't have to cook them very long. And they're just wonderful. And then when I'm done, when I'm done, I have them look like this. So Jim's handing me stuff. Thank you, Jim. Can oh my, see my God, they, they look delicious. Oh, they are. And the thing is what I really like about them, I'd like to break it open, but I want to eat them later. Um, they're soft and mushy on the inside, but look, you can take them for lunch. So easily you can stack them and take them for lunch. You could also, something I like to do is I like to cut tomato and put on top and then make a little sandwich with my lettuce leaves, my romaine lettuce. And you can put avocado if you're not doing the weight loss program. And you could put, um, mustard if you want to get the west brace salt free mustard but they're just yummy in fact jim after i've only been making these for about two weeks and jim wants me to make them all the time because he loves them so much okay we're done with that recipe and they yeah. could be and it really couldn't be easier and the reason we know they're easy is because chef bravo had only 20 minutes in the iron chef to come up with this recipe and he had to oh, that really? and cook that. yeah he oh, did it in so taste of LA, and the secret well, ingredient was cannellini beans and uh i believe yeah and hannah yam and he had to use both of them and it took him 20 minutes and, and you can you can switch it up like sometimes i'll put smoked paprika in mine or chipotle powder put in yeah. any kind of flavor you want. Yeah, no, that would be terrific. I, I'll, I'll try some variations of it too. 
for me, I even like to add some red peppers, uh, hot peppers, a little bit, make it real spicy. But that's me. Jim, Jim doesn't like that. So I'll have them on. My two will have peppers and his two won't. Yeah, what is it with these guys? Charles is the same way. I always have to make everything mild and then add the heat later. <laughs> everything mild for men. Oh, I know. What's wrong with them? <laughs> we gotta be spicy. We gotta be spicy. Charles, come on. You know what's great about Linda, you guys, is uh, you were commenting on how nice she looks. Uh, she she has the best taste in clothes. Every every time you see me wearing a nice pair of earrings or a very nice shirt, it came from Linda. She just has exquisite <laughs> a, a fashion well, style. And every time she likes something I like, uh, we like the same stuff. You know, purple is my favorite color too. So I know you and. Uh, what I'm always surprised is that you, you need such a large size. You look so itsy bitsy. It just looks so itsy bitsy. It must just cling to you right. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to make you the cookie recipe. So I'll have that come over here. Oh, Jim, I forgot to tell you, Jim likes to put his hamburger arm between, um, cut the pita bread in half and then put, his avocado and his everything together with the hamburger on these. And I found one without salt or or um, oil. And it's the only one I found is called Family Pita. I think he ordered it online. From, yeah. from New Jersey. New Jersey, it comes in New Jersey. <laughs> but that's the only one without those terrible ingredients, okay. Hey, Linda, everyone wants to know if Jim actually lost weight when he hooked up with you. Jim lost over 32 pounds. Yeah. And he lost his uh, heart disease. He lost um, his cholesterol. He had really high cholesterol. He lost his high blood pressure. And he knew that if he didn't change his diet to mine, I wouldn't be here. So he decided he liked me enough to stick around. So he, he didn't even question me. He just said, okay, I'll do it. He went right into my eating immediately. He didn't jump into it slowly. Uh, one good thing about Jim is he was trying to find out about this diet, uh, being healthier, not this diet, but being healthier. And he had gone to here, you know, Dr. Don Forrester is my good friend who lives here in Sacramento. He had gone to a lecture of Don Forrester before he met me. And Don Forrester was showing before and after people on his program talk. I think it was a sex state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a sex, Sacramento State University. And Jim was so impressed. He went up to Dr. Don afterwards and said, who should I get a hold of to, to help me along with this? And Dr. Don said, oh, just look up the Sacramento Vegan Society. And so he called, the Jim called the Sacramento Vegan Society. And guess who answers the phone for that? It was me. And so that was it. I mean, he just wanted to know everything and he just jumped right in. He had already downloaded a bunch of PCRM uh, recipes too. He hadn't tried them yet, but... So I was kind of the catalyst. He was already sort of interested in it. And now he, he, he's really clean. Just, I'm so proud of him too. Um, so we both got healthy. And okay, on to the cookie recipe. I need more gloves. If only so, all men were as easy to convert to healthy eating as Jim. Say what? I said, if only all men were as easy to convert to healthy eating as Jim was. If only all men were as healthy as I am. Yeah, if only, if only. I mean, they don't have any idea. I have um, still friends of mine who one member, especially the female, seems to get it first. They find out how not only to lose weight if they need it, but they, they learn how to be healthier and lose a lot of their chronic diseases. Um, and then it takes the men a little longer, doesn't it? Usually. I found that one movie back then, I found that one movie did it. I used to have my clients come to me and say, my husband just won't do this, Linda. And I said, well, you got to do what's for you then. Hopefully one day when he sees how healthy you are, 
he'll come along. And so I said, if you can, get them to watch Earthlings, the movie Earthlings, and that will do it. Well, I've had several men come to me with big wide eyes going, I'm ready, Linda. <laughs> I said, oh, you saw Earthlings, did you? Oh, huh, I understand. Once you see Earthlings, you can't unlook it or unknow it. You have to go, okay, I can't do this to animals. I just can't. So that's the movie. If you can get your guy to watch, is one of the best. Now I'm using the, I love Forks Over Knives, of course. Everybody has to watch that. But Game Changers is more, newer, and I think it gets to men quite quickly. So I think that's a really powerful movie for people to watch. It shows everything from heart disease to erectile dysfunction. And that kind of gets men interested, right? Absolutely. So, Linda, me, Linda, they're asking if you had thyroid nodules and if they went away. Uh, yeah, I have no nodules and I had a great big nodule on my thyroid, yeah. And he really wanted to take it out. But I'm so glad that I just happened to move to the neighborhood in Sacramento and my neighbor, Frances McChesney, she and I were walking our dogs around the park and she said, oh, you don't have to do that. Just get a hold of Dr. John McDougall. And that was a story. The reason I'm still here, I think uh, one doctor said my heart disease was so terrible that I would probably be dead within five years. Well, this is 32 years later. I'm still here. And seriously, I feel so good and I'm strong. Can you see my muscle? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so strong and I feel, you know, I've had a lot of tragedy happen in my life. Um, my grandson died, my husband died, and I had several blessed dogs die. And, and everybody has this kind of loss. Well, maybe not quite the same, but everybody has some sort of loss in their life. And what I'd like to say is the reason I'm doing okay is because not just the relationship I have with Jim now, and not just because of my friends I have now, but the reason I'm doing okay and can survive right now with people uh, with, and, and, and being alive and wanting to get up in the morning and do everything and not get depressed is my purpose in life. I think this purpose in life, like you, AJ, you have this immense purpose and you're carrying it out with your amazing interviews, but I think this purpose in life is the one thing that kept me from just spiraling straight into depression, which I think I could have done quite easily. And I know when I get up in the morning, I'm going to do something. I know I'm going to do something to help animals. I know I'm going to do something to help people. I know I'm going to do something to help the planet. And those three things keep me. I, I don't have time to think about anything else. I'm so busy trying to do those things. If I had more time, I would work on the Innocence Project and homelessness. And those two things for, are really big on my list as well. Yep. But I, the, the, the top three are the first ones and I, I don't have much time after that. But it really does help to have this wonderful purpose and reason for being really for me. So it goes beyond weight loss. It goes beyond any of my relationships even because some of us live all alone and don't have much family. And, but you still have a purpose. You, you have a way to go forward, to want to go forward, to stay here on the earth and fight as long as you can to help animals, people, and the earth. So that was my little sermon. I'm going to get to the cookies now, okay? Hey, uh, just one question. People ask if you do eat avocado now or you just still more on I just eat it rarely because if I eat too much of it, it's so high caloric. I can put on pounds. If I eat one avocado a day, I'd probably gain 10 pounds in two weeks. So I have to be just really careful with it. Once in a while, I'll make those avocado brownies and I'll have some, right? But I don't do that very often because it's real easy for me in fact, Jim was eating an avocado burger sandwich from my Boca uh, Bravo burgers today. And he said, I got leftover avocado for you, Linda. And I said, don't do that. You 
know I would eat it. So put it away and eat it tomorrow. So he did. But even with that temptation, I know what it does to me quickly. So as much as I love them, as much as I love eating the chocolate chip cookies with him, I have to be careful there. So are we ready for the oatmeal? Absolutely, but people want to know about V Dog. They don't. Not everybody knows that that's your company. Oh, V Dog! Oh my gosh! I'm my late husband and I. He died about five, almost five and a half years ago, and he was climbing on a mountain in Glacier, Montana. But anyway, long story there. But he died when he wasn't supposed to, and he left the company. He and I founded it in 2005. And we founded it because we had gone to a conference in Washington, D.C., and some English company had a vegan dog food being displayed there. And it, we had already been vegan for, I don't know, 15 years or more. And I said, oh, my goodness, I didn't know dogs could be vegan. And he didn't either. And we looked at each other and said, we got to look into this. And when we get home from the conference, we looked up how dogs can thrive on a vegan diet. I said, I don't want to do anything that hurts any dog or my dog. No, nobody's dog. Well, we found out from nutritionists and all kinds of resources and research that dogs can thrive on a plant-based diet. The reason they can is because unlike their ancestor, the wolves, dogs, because they've been evolving with humans for thousands of years, they have created extra amylase enzymes in their body, which allows them to um, digest starch. So what happened is wolves have a few of these enzymes, but dogs have like 25, 28 times more of that same um, amylase 2B, I think it's called. And so they can thrive. And so we created this dog food, which has all the same amount of protein as a dog, uh, meat-based dog food. And we um, added all these good ingredients so they'd be nutritionally balanced. We have taurine for their heart. So they have everything in it they need because we've always loved dogs, both of us. And we wanted to, to not have to hurt lots of animals by feeding dogs, our dogs, animals. And especially the, the main dog food or any dog food you buy out there in the world, it comes with meat, but it comes from maybe euthanized animals and all kinds of body parts like the brain and oh, just the horrible things in that dog food that you wouldn't want your dog to eat. And sometimes they use um, other animal parts or different animals. So you just really, it sounded so gross to me when I found that out. I had no idea that that was that, that way. But anyway, so we have this dog food company and then my husband died and I thought the dog food company would die with him because I was just helping him along with ideas and I helped co-found it, but I didn't do, I didn't run the business, he did. So my dear son, Darren Middlesworth, who's a personal trainer and all these other things, he decided he would take over the company when my husband died. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. So he did. He's doing a great job, my son Darren Middlesworth, with the dog. And while we have, we're in a bunch of countries like Hong Kong and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and Guam and a whole bunch of places. So we're doing really well with it now. And he is just, he's just become this amazing businessman. I go, who are you? I didn't even know you had that side. And he said, Mom, I got an MBA overnight. And I said, You sure did. So I'm just really proud of him. And I'm so glad that people are thriving. Their dogs are thriving on B-Dog all over the place. And the reason we know they're thriving is we get their blood tests. They get their blood tests and they're perfect. So that's how we get, went B-Dog. And I'm so proud of that. Are we ready for the recipe? Yes, ma'am. Okay, here goes. We have... Four cups of whole rolled oats in here. Now, because of the virus, I couldn't get organic rolled oats. Can you believe it? But I, I'm going to use these anyway because I like these cookies and so does Jim. So I have four cups of rolled oats in here. 
And then I'm going to put four bananas. Now, I like them a little bit riper than this. The riper they are, as Tammy said yesterday, the sweeter they are. But they're pretty sweet anyway, even if you don't have super ripe ones with you. But I'm going to put the four bananas in here. It's so easy. This it is basically a two ingredient recipe and I'll show you what I do to alter it a little bit. Okay, so I just mush, mush the bananas right in here with the, uh, the oats until they're all mixed up. You know, Linda, it seems to me you like recipes that use your hands. What? It, it seems to me you like recipes that use your hands. Both these recipes were hand mixed. I know, there's something about getting your stress out too by squashing things. It, it really is helpful. So when you get it all mixed up, you can use, maybe add a few oats, but see if you have really big bananas so that it's not too sloppy, but I mush it all together till they're all mixed together. And then what I do for Jim, okay, okay, sorry about the fingers. What I do for Jim is I add the chocolate chips. These are sugar-free. They're sweetened with monk fruit and they are salt-free. And so they're fabulous for Jim. They're a little higher calorically than what I can stand to eat much of. I do try them sometimes, but they are delicious. So I've never found, I used to use the Enjoy Life over at Whole Foods, but they're made with cane sugar. And cane sugar is not even vegan. In case your people don't know, cane sugar is made with bones of animals. They char the, to refine the sugar, they use animal bones to char it. And so a lot of people don't know that sugar is not vegan. And you know me, I'm in this for the animals and poor people too, but the animals, they don't have any voice at all. So I don't want to use products with any animal ingredients at all plus it's refined sugar which isn't good for anything weight loss or anything so okay now i've got my cookies ready and jim is going to hand me a plate just a plate for now i put these on the just no just a white plate yeah. so jim, jim is going to hand me a plate now i make pretty big cookies Put it right over here, over here. Hold it over here. Okay, there we go. So there, there's my cookies. Now with Jim's, I have the chocolate chips inside here. Now I, I'll finish these later, but I want to show you the other things I do. So I also, I you know, have you heard of um, Bio Nature Jam? It's on my tray, right? Bio Nature Jam is a fruit spread with no sugar added. So I this one's bilberry, but there's different flavors. And I make a thumbprint. Can you see that, AJ? That is so cool. You're making thumbprint cookies. Yeah, and then I put this jam in the middle. And then I cook these at 375 for about 40 minutes. And they make these delicious, unbelievable cookies. Or instead of that, I use the chocolate chips. But I do both. And this one's more legal for me without the chocolate chips. But I got to a point where I was eating too many of those too, because it's more concentrated calories with the banana all cooked up in there and everything. So let me show you what the ones look like with chocolate chips. Here's the cooked ones with chocolate chips. And they are so good. I don't have a jam one here, but I think they're really just yummy. Now, when you do the um, when you do the the jam one, you can also make. I found in Chef AJ's book, you can make your own jam. I forgot the ratio, AJ, but I think it's like a pound of berries you cook up, and then you add chia seeds and you put it in the fridge, and it makes jam. Yes. A healthy little jam. So right? easy, isn't that right? So easy. Yeah, so easy to make jam that way. So I'm done with the cookies. 
If you want that recipe, you just have to email me and I'll send it to you. I don't write it down, so I'll have to write it down for you. But I want to show you one more thing about the cookies. And this is, have you seen this, AJ? Is it a soy milk maker? It's a, it has a little cow on the top. It's called almond cow. And it's the most fantastic machine for making non-dairy milk. You can make oat milk and soy milk and almond milk. And I bought it, it's in Canada. It took forever to come here, but you just put like a cup of almonds in here. Can you see this? And then you put it right here and you go like that. You put water, you put water in here. You close this down, you plug it in. And I'm not kidding, you press this button and it goes bloop once, bloop two, bloop three, and now you've got the most creamy, beautiful almond milk you've ever seen. And I also do, sometimes I do half oat and half almond milk too. And they have a beautiful jar. Jim's going to get me to show you the jar it goes in. But it has a beautiful jar that you hold your milk in. And you never have to go to the store. It's less of a carbon footprint this way. So I really hope you try it. AJ, do you notice I'm making my hair gray now? I didn't notice. Let me let me see. I, I did not know that. See that? I'm wow. going gray. Uh oh, is it because of the sheltering? No, just because I decided I didn't want to dye my hair anymore. I got tired of it. So it's going to be different. But hey, I'm 76. I might as well look my age, right? <laughs> oh boy. Well, we'll see. So Linda. Look Every guest I've ever had on, people always want to know two things. What do you eat for a day and what is your exercise like? Now, I know that you are an aerobics instructor, so it's probably not the same now when you can't go to the gym and teach. Yeah, I didn't have to think about my exercise. This is, wait, this is the, bo the bottle that comes with the almond cow and it holds your milk in there. It's just lovely. Um, what do I eat in a day? Okay, I'm, I eat like AJ now, I think. Well, although I, I used to eat more raw salads in the morning, but I decided I like hot food in the morning. So I'm not doing the salad in the morning, but I'm doing a ton of cooked vegetables. I mean, I have broccoli, I have Brussels sprouts, I have carrots, and what else? Um, arugula, um, what else? Oh, oh, kale, of course. Tons of kale. I take the whole bunch of kale and I eat that whole bunch by myself in that one big pot I have. And I cook it up in about an inch or two of water, depending on how many how much food you have in there. And I can barely get the lid on. I cook it up for about maybe 10 minutes and it's ready to eat. Now, sometimes I use California balsamic on it, but a lot of times I eat it just like that. And sometimes I add some of the blueberries or mango chunks to it. It's absolutely fabulous. I eat the whole pan by myself. <laughs> and then I used to drink coffee, but thanks to AJ, I'm not doing that anymore either. I'm drinking that Caro drink. And it's a barley and rye hot drink. And it looks like coffee. So I feel like I'm drinking coffee, but I'm not. I used to put almond milk in it, but I decided that it's too high calorie also, so I left it out. But then I have for lunch, I usually have potatoes, lots of potatoes, easy. I like my air fryer. I make a lot of Yukon uh, air fried potatoes in there. I make um, Tammy Kramer smashed potato, or smashed to make potatoes a lot. And I make up my own ketchup a lot, so there's no, no added bad ingredients. Or I make a cheesy beanie sauce for them sometimes if I feel it. Mostly I just eat my potatoes. And when I'm teaching aerobics, I just take a lot of potatoes in my Ziploc bag or in my little Tupperware. And I eat them during the day. I pop them in my mouth. If they're in the car, they're kind of lukewarm. And they're pretty good that way. And they give me energy to teach my next class. And it's just real simple eating, basically. And then at night, before dinner, I like to have a big raw salad, a colorful one. I got to get back into it. I've been kind of lazy lately, but I make up six jars, 
seven jars, sorry, uh, mason jars, I guess they're quart size, and I layer them with different colors like carrots and kale and chopped really small, de stem it first, and then um, celery and radishes and cucumbers and anything you want in your salad all in there. And then you put all seven of them in your refrigerator. You can pull one out a day, put it in a big bowl, put California Thomas balsamic vinegar on it or whatever you want and then eat that. And then I have, again, in the evening, I usually have more potatoes. I'm a potato freak. And for dessert, if I have a sweet tooth, sometimes if I don't have one of my oatmeal cookies, I'll make an oatmeal with a cinnamon and an apple and microwave it, real simple. And that's a very typical, sometimes I'll eat tacos, you know, with the corn tortillas that have no oil or salt. Mi rancho, I use mi rancho with, but mostly yeah, that's what I eat. And I eat a lot of potatoes. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear you're eating vegetables for breakfast. Cause I remember when I met you years ago, it was always oatmeal and fruit. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't know better until you came visit, you visited us. I thought, wow, she does do this. It wasn't just at True North. You do it all the time. And I realized how good it made me feel. You know, one thing too, how people get so busy and they don't always get their veggies in, but now I've covered it. I've got all oh, my veggies in for the day. It feels so good to have that done. And then if I don't get veggies in the rest of the day, I feel like I've got that done. You know, I've, and you know what the thing it does for me most, just like exercise, or moving your body, like JP talked. Uh, what makes you feel so good is that you feel good about yourself after you eat these nutrient-rich foods. And it's a self-esteem booster. People don't think of food as a self-esteem booster. Same thing with moving your body. I always talked, used to, when I was teaching before the virus, telling my classes, what's the number reason, number one reason you're taking my class? That's Bentley in the background. I think it's the male, male person at the door. What's the number one reason you're in my class? What's your number one benefit? And the first few times they say, oh, I'm stronger, my heart healthy, I feel better. I said, that's not it. Tell me what it is. And then now when I ask that question in my aerobics classes, I go, self-esteem, Linda, I know. Because again, I, fortunately, I do my aerobics classes in the morning mostly, and I feel so good about myself. First, I ate all my veggies. Then I did my aerobics, and you know, my self-esteem goes through the roof. I feel terrific about myself now. And that is helping me stay into a happier mode during all day. So that's what I love to do. And that's what I do do now. Now that we have the virus, I'm not teaching. And I don't know when we're going to get back to the gym. My students, some of them email me who happen to have my email. We usually don't have those. And they say, Linda, I missed your class. What am I going to do? I said, I don't know. We have to wait. I said, watch some YouTube videos. So what I'm making gym do now, because I don't teach at the gym, I teach gym. I teach <laughs> gym what I used to teach at the gym. And he's really liking it too, because he used to pay for this and at a gym. And now I have him doing this routine. We try to do it every other day where I do the muscle weights. By the way, you can use the cans. If you don't have any weights, you can use cans of beans. In fact, if I can ever figure out Zoom AJ, maybe Charles will help me, and Tom Kramer and Tammy, but if I ever figure it out, I'm gonna do some Zoom aerobics and body sculpting classes. Because I like to teach kickboxing, I like to teach step, I like to teach aerobic dance and body sculpting with weights and body sculpting with no weights. And so I'd love to be able to teach those since I don't have a job there anymore right now. I don't know when I'm going to get it back. It's one of the biggest gyms with thousands of instructors here in my area. So it gives me more time to watch all your interviews, though, which I love to do. And the people you have on here are just fantastic. And I thank you for your work, AJ. It's just amazing. Hey, um, you're, you're, one of your kids is on. 
What? One of your kids is on. One of your kids. My kids? kids. What about my kids? They're watching. Oh, I don't know. Are they? Uh Uh-huh. My kids are watching? Which kid? D-A-O. Oh, D-A-O. That's Dow. Dow. She always remembers to follow me. She's so sweet. Hi, Dow. Hi, honey. So glad you're here. She's been asking me for more and more vegan recipes, so I'm excited. And so she's getting good. I sent her the Forks Over Knives family cookbook because she has little ones, Maya and Chase. And they're adorable. So, yeah, that's really great. I, Darren, I didn't think was going to have time today, so he probably didn't do it. So, but anyway, it's nice to have you, Dow. Thank you, honey. Linda, I know you're probably busy, uh, you know, training Jim. Do you have time to ever like read a book or watch anything on Netflix? Because we love to find out what our guests are reading and watching. Okay, you want to know what I'm reading and watching? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I like the same things you do, like uh, Downton Abbey and M- uh, Mrs. Maisel. And I like Doc Martin, but I haven't seen him for a while. And I like any kind of romantic show, <laughs> anything like that. And sometimes I even watch violent shows. Don't ask me why. But they always have a good outcome, and then I'm all right. <laughs> but I think we watched, what was it, Occidental or something like that. And just, I like uh, just a lot of drama movies that have good good outcomes. What are we watching now? What's that called? Oh, Dead to Me. It's kind of violent in places. <laughs> But it's kind of really well done, I think. Um, that's funny. I'm watching that too. You are? Yep. Yeah. It's kind of violent in places. And it's very, um, what I like about it most is you don't know what's going to happen. It keeps having a new twist, which you go, really? So you can't believe what's going on. But I feel like it's pretty real too, you know, I think. So I like that. And I, I like to read. I'm kind of an informational reader more. I like to read like lots of science books and the different doctors who have books. And then I read all my vegan friends books. Like I really love this book called Oblivion by my friend Sandy Nasanowitz because she's in New York and she tells kind of her story how she moved into veganism. But it's also about how she felt like she wasn't even noticed and then how her life changed this beautiful story it's not even very long it's only about 80 pages but if you can get a hold of oblivion it's one of my favorites and then i have some of my friends like esther who wrote book from donuts to uh, to potatoes excellent book on her change change over to a Plant-based diet. Esther is watching live and she's going to get some recipes and she's going to be uh, presenting on one of the lives in the near future. Oh, nice. Hi, Esther. Fabulous <laughs> book. Fabulous book. Linda, Lori wants to know if you, what do you think about rebounding? About what? Rebounding. Rebounding? Rebounding? I haven't seen it. No, no. Rebounding is a type of exercise. Oh, oh, no, I don't do that. But it's good. Any exercise is good. I just don't happen to do that one. But I do. I used to teach Zumba. So sometimes I put a few Zumba moves inside of my interval training for body sculpting. So we'll do bicep, overhead press, and over shoulder. And it gets so many muscles. But then I'll do a little cardio. And also a question, how long do the cookies last? Well, when I was eating them uh, like two or three days, Jim is so disciplined. He only eats two a day and I make about, what is it, 12. So it takes about that long because I'm not eating them for the most part. So (laughs) when I was eating them, I was eating them for breakfast, you know. So, I mean, I had to have one for breakfast after, right after I ate my vegetables. And then I have to have two after my lunch and maybe three after dinner. I mean, it was terrible. So I told myself it had to end, (laughs) and it has. So I'm being a really, really good girl for about, what, two months now? Or a Mm -hmm. month and a half? So, and I find that people 
You know, when I do my 30 days with people, I tell them, I'm called the vegan bitch for a reason. <laughs> because when you start with me, I'm, I said, I'm not going to do forgiveness. There's no forgiveness for 30 days. You can do this. You can eat healthy whole foods for 30 days. And just because grandpa had his 100th birthday and had a big cake, you're not allowed to have it during my 30 days with you. And I found this to be very uh, helpful. And if they fall off the wagon in the 30 days, I say, you know, you can come back next month. You don't have to pay me. You just come back next month and we'll try again. You're not quite ready for your 30 days. And I found this really helps because what would happen before is that people go along for two, two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks. And then they had a huge Thanksgiving dinner and they had to eat all of it. And I thought, oh, okay. Not ready for me. You can start next month if you want or the month after that. But let me know when you're ready because we want to change your taste buds. We want to get through the high addictive foods so that you don't feel like you need to have it again and again. People ask me too about stevia and all those kind of sweeteners, non-sugar. Those trick your brain to want even more sweet. So I tell people don't do that. Use fruit, fruit as your sweetener. And then you can stop those extra sweet cravings that you have. You try to. That so that's the way I found it works better for my people. And I have about a 90% success rate with that because when they would just go along and fall off the wagon, I thought I got so frustrated. But then I said, okay, I tell them up front, this is a clean 30 days. It's like cigarettes and alcohol. You can't have one cigarette. You can't have one glass of wine. You're right back on it. Well, cause it's the same thing with foods especially uh, cheese. Cheese is so highly addicted with the casomorphine in there. The reason it has that in there is, is, is to make the baby cow come back to the mama cow. But as far as I know, we humans don't have big ears or a tail, so we shouldn't be eating the milk that belongs in any form, cheese, cottage cheese, ice cream, in any form, because it belongs to the baby cow who we need to give it to. So anyway, that's the way I run that, but I find that people are doing really well with that kind of start. I say, this is, true. I'm sorry. I mean, sometimes they make a mistake because they didn't know something was in something. That I can forgive because they were unaware. Like a lot of people don't know that a lot of the non-dairy milks have palm oil in them, but they disguise the name. Most of the non-dairy milks on the shelf at Whole Foods have vitamin A palmitate. It's called VIT-A palmitate. I thought it was a vitamin or something. It's palm oil. That's all it is. And so people who are trying to lose weight, they're still eating palm oil. And people who are trying to not hurt the animals, well, palm oil hurts the animals. We're just wiping out palm oil fruit for the orangutans and other other animals who eat it and we don't want to do that so i beg people not to eat it for that reason but if you're on weight loss or have you don't want heart disease because oils cause heart disease we teach that in my cancer classes for food for life a lot of people don't know that oil is inflammatory for cancer and they don't know that it's bad for your heart. It shuts down the endothelial cells that hold open your arteries. Oil does that, any kind of oil, whether it's motor oil or olive oil or a cold pressed olive oil, coconut oil, all those vegetable oils actually destroy also the nitric oxide that holds open your arteries. So we have to stop that too. It's, uh, that's why I had such heart disease. I was still eating oil. I couldn't get rid of my heart disease until I took out the oil, even after I went vegan. So vegan, people think vegan is a, is, is a food change. Vegan is not about food. It's about animals and doing no harm to animals for any reason, not entertainment and not for eating, not for anything, not for lab experiments. So uh, really 
people need to all go vegan, but they also need to be whole food plant-based like you teach AJ, because if you want to live well and not in pain and not in chronic disease, that's what we all have to do. It's not me telling you what to do. It's what I did to get healthy. It's what AJ did to get healthy. Every single plant-based doctor we work with, they do that. They eat this way too. So Dr. Greger, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Uh, Clapper, all of them, they're just wonderful. That way, teaching people how to get healthy with the whole food plant-based diet. So I'm so glad I found this way of being in the world. And if I can help anybody else do this, I'm, I'm here. Well, we thank you so much. For your, we thank you for your tremendous contribution. And I put your website several times, veganmentor.com, and your email if people want to try your 30 day health watch and if they want to get any further information. And we look forward to that exercise class because now in quarantine, that would have been a great. I haven't done that yet, <laughs> but I will. Well, we'll get that. Well, you are amazing and you look amazing. And thank you so much for doing this. And thanks all of you guys for watching. I hope that you will come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. when we have another fabulous cooking demo by Shada Soleimani of Healthy Cooking with Shada. She's going to be making a spicy black bean corn salad and a forbidden rainbow salad. And we possibly will have a surprise guest at one o'clock, a doctor. I'm confirming that now, but then starting on Monday, we are decreasing to just one interaction a day. So we thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much for sharing and please consider subscribing to my channel and my mailing list so that you can notify who the guests are. Any last closing thoughts, Linda? Just go vegan and go healthy vegan. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> we should say go vegan or go home. No, just kidding. Yeah, that too. <laughs> okay. And, and we learned a new phrase today. If you have any questions, just Google McDougal. Thank you. Take care, Linda. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank Bye. Thank you so much, AJ. Bye-bye.